Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. This video is going to be a little bit different than our following structure. As I want to go through a few items here, I was the basically I was tagged in a lot of amazing articles today, and I want to go through some of them. One I'm going to go through today, I was tagged in by XRP Plumber. Uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, his statement is something is up. The BIS is sending out a ton of info today. Pound XRP community. And then the next um, comment in the stream was tagging me and some a few other content providers. So I wanted to get into this. Let's, so basically, let's just dive right in. Click on the article. It takes us right to the BIS. Technical advances are making domestic payments safer, faster, and cheaper. Then we click on this and send us to the innovations and payments. And here's where we're going to have a little fun. Um, tonight's structure is going to be basically the way I do a show on a guest show or if I have it set up to do a little deep dive. But I'm going to go through this and share a few thoughts and I'm going to try my best to stay focused there's so much content here I could do a 10 hour video no joke but I'm gonna try and stay focused tonight's focus I think we're gonna call it um, how um, I'm, I'm totally stumbling uh, how XRP can have a huge price we've discussed this many times but I wanted to share that as I just go through this article. Let me see if I didn't happen to open. Okay, no, I didn't open two of the same, making sure. On the BIS, innovations and payments. And again, I'm gonna try and bite my tongue through this, so to speak, as not to get off guard and go too deep for too many different reasonings. I wanna go through a few things as we've discussed and it's nice to have them right here in front of your face to share with you. Um, let's go to the headline really quick. The technological innovation is transforming payments. Domestic payments are increasingly convenient, instantaneous, and available 24-7. However, shortcomings in access to payments and cross-border payments remain. Lack of ease or lack of access to payments is a problem in some emerging market and developing economies. Improving cross-border payments will require international coordination. Initiatives to improve cross-border payments would benefit from better data to quantify both the extent and the drivers of the problems. And as we know that XRP is the convenient, fast, instantaneous, and available 24-7-365. There are a few others who could possibly fit, but not quite as well as XRP and I will get into the explanation as to the why. I'm going to scroll down a little bit through this and highlight um, a few uh, articles in this discussions. Right here I want to highlight another. Let's see if we can get it to highlight so you can follow along if you're able to. As long as you're not driving and you're not working, don't get in trouble. And be safe out there. In contrast, wholesale payments are between financial institutions. For example, payments to settle securities and foreign exchange trades, payments to and from central counterparties, and other interbank funding transactions. These are typically large value payments that often need to settle on a particular day and sometimes by a particular time. While there are significantly fewer wholesale payments compared with retail payments, their value both individually and in aggregate. Aggregate is means such as a group is much larger. Given their system systemic importance, the wholesale payment systems are generally owned and operated by central banks. Two things I want to highlight, no pun intended, on this article. For example, payments to settle securities. XRP was designed to do enterprise, institution, and wholesale payments. As we're going to get into, there are retail payments 
and there are wholesale payments in the banking and the central bank industry, such as CBDCs. There's a wholesale and there is a retail. In the banking world, there is a wholesale and there is a retail. We've shared many times how every time Ripple opens their mouth, they mention the wholesale enterprise institutional by design. <clears throat> to me, and I'm sure Brad and the others, executives at Ripple, because as this states, XRP is designed to be a wholesale payment enterprise institutional payment. What is that for? It is for much larger. What is the other thing? A much higher value for its price. So you can understand why that's the main focus and target. It would force XRP to have a much higher price. Now, coming back to the securities lawsuit, to me, it's humorous, for example, accusing Ripple of selling a security with that security being stated as XRP when you know that XRP is designed to settle securities. So there you have it. Another thing I want to remind again, <clears throat> while there are significantly fewer wholesale payments compared with retail payments, their value both individually and in aggregate is much larger. Again, stating that the value and the price of XRP would have to be much larger. I'm gonna try and stay on this. <clears throat> okay, I guess I did open two, so we're gonna skip on to the next one. The cross-border retail payments. This is going to explain a little bit more with the retail. The funds transfers of relatively low value. An urgency where the parties to the payment are end users, i.e. individuals, businesses, or government agencies. And the payer and the payee are located in different natural, national jurisdictions. Typically, cross-border retail payments are remote payments and involve the national payment systems of at least two jurisdictions, specialized processes, and different currencies. We're going to get into some other stuff, so I'm going to try not to get ahead of myself. My theory is that XRP was the wholesale focus and that XLM is the retail focus. And I can continue to go into that as we've shared many. Another thing as we go further into these articles, when you were finished with this video, if it excites you the least bit, you may want to follow this video up with our CBDC video of recent. And I think you'll be very excited if you are an XRP XLM or Ethereum investor. But again, this video is focusing on XRP, so I'm going to try and stay there the best that I can. On this one, let's see what I was going to focus on. Um, there was so much stuff, and it was really easily for someone to get off focus, knowing so much research as we do here daily, hourly, and annually. Um, let's just go down right to the front art, the whole article here. It's a short one. Investigating the impact of global stablecoins. <clears throat> because I have another comment on that as well. Payments are in a state of flux and innovation is extensive. Domestic payments in most instances are increasingly convenient, instantaneous, and available 24-7. Yet despite significant improvements in recent years, current payment systems still have two major failings. Lack of universal access to financial services for a large share of the world's population and inefficient cross-border retail payments. The private and public sectors must continue to explore innovative ways to make payments better, reduce inefficiencies, and be more inclusive. And we've heard nothing but inclusive in all of these years, or this year's, uh, BIS, central banks, um, take your pick anything to do with financial inclusive was one of the popular words recently a number of stablecoin initiatives have emerged some sponsored by large technology or financial firms stablecoins which have many of the features of earlier cryptocurrencies but seek to stabilize the price of the coin by linking its value to that of a pool of assets have the potential to contribute to the development of more efficient global payment arrangements Against this backdrop, the group of seven presidency set up a working group on stablecoins chaired by Benoît Couture. 
uh, chair of the CPMI, and we've done videos on him as well, to examine the challenges, risk, and benefits that global stablecoins may pose. The Working Group report finds that stablecoins, regardless of size, have implications ranging from anti-money laundering if efforts across jurisdictions to operational resilience, including for cybersecurity, consumer investor and data protection, and tax compliance. Global stablecoins may amplify those challenges and could also pose challenges to competition policy, financial stability, monetary policy, and in the extreme, the international monetary system. This report lays out initial recommendations for both private sector stablecoin developers and public sector authorities to address the challenges and risks. Financial, or finally, the report suggests that authorities could develop roadmaps for improving the efficiency and lowering the cost of payments and financial services. And one thing, as we have discussed also and shown between Twitter here and here in video on our YouTube channel, is that the Bank of Canada had labeled on the Payments uh, Payments Canada, which is under the Bank of Canada, um, the XRP and XLM were labeled directly stable coins. And again, I state that many people, in my opinion, misrepresent that as new, uh, as they're new to the investments and new to the understanding of digital assets and currencies they tend to think stablecoin is one per one USD, like a dollar per dollar or one per one, so to speak. But that's not the definition of stablecoin. That would be more like a fixed stablecoin. Stablecoin is something that is more stable versus something as volatile as Bitcoin. And if you've had to, um, you know, in the previous years, if you've had to purchase Bitcoin to send from one exchange to another to buy a different currency, or a digital asset or crypto, whatever you want to label it as, then you've known it's, there's a chance that between the time it took to send that Bitcoin and its delay, um, that it could possibly have raised and you have more currency to purchase, or it could possibly drop and you have much less. And that is the risk many of us took a few years ago when Bitcoin was the only option to purchase or exchange uh, different uh, currencies on multiple exchanges. On this page, I highlighted the report considers a wholesale CBDC for use in financial markets and a general purpose CBDC for use by the general public and their implications for payments, monetary policy, and financial stability. It looks like there's more. I'll keep going just to see. Uh, it finds that wholesale CBDCs might be used for payments, but more work is needed to access to assess the full potential, although a CBDC would not alter the basic mechanics of monetary policy implementation, its transmission could be affected. And again, I'm going through a lot of these articles. I barely skimmed through some of them to quickly get a few highlights, but I'm basically reading them with you now. Another tweet, um, XRP Plumber had a uh, tagged me in was the BIS again, converting financial assets into digital tokens could reduce the cost and complexity of securities trades, but does not eliminate risks associated with one party failing to settle transactions. Tonight's show, we're basically going off of information that we were tagged in, as I thought it was very exciting, and we had been tagged in such great articles between these two I, I couldn't resist so thank you xrp plumber um on the future of securities settlement there's also a video here i will as always provide the links below in the description so that you can further research read through anything that we've said obviously if we say it we share it anyway so will know it's there but you'll be able to do further research as we're not going through all of the information that is available and this one is a very extremely long and I did breeze through some of the information so I'm gonna just basically scroll down um, and go through some of this with you there was a wholesale digital token link right there but we do have that one clicked and we are going to discuss that and get into that just in a few moments. Um, 
Thanks for your patience. As we scroll down, I don't want to go too fast. I know that can be a headache if you're watching your screen. Um, give me a moment here. There's tokenizing securities, which a lot of that is coming out now <clears throat> and is getting more popular with the XRP and XRPL with people beginning to tokenize assets on there. Um, let's see. No, I didn't want to go into permission to private, but I do believe there was something in here. <clears throat> as this article was extremely long so you can see why I did not want to go through every single bit of that I will attach it so that if you can if you're interested but I mean this video would be extremely long um, if I share my thoughts on all of this and I continue to go through this word for word so I'm skipping through just grabbing some of the uh, points in each article to highlight um, see was it here we'll go into the conclusion because I know some of it's down below I see what I did on this one uh, conclusion tokens may be the future of security settlement but they will not change the fundamental nature of securities transactions in particular there will be uh, there will continue to be trades where the delivery of the securities and the payment need to be linked to eliminate principal risk while this is possible using tokens and certain arrangements, there is some risk of reintroducing principal risks. Tokenization could also change the way that replacement cost risk is managed. For example, shortening settlement cycles as an alternative to central clearing. Using tokens and the underlying DLT may offer a number of benefits, and it could reduce the complexity and security settlement by facilitating simpler, more direct holding systems. It can also facilitate increased automation through the use of smart contracts. The ability of tokenized systems to interoperate with account-based systems will be key to their success. Currently, transfers are largely conducted across account-based systems, and tokenization introduces three new types of arrangement. Depending on whether the security or the cash or both are tokenized, as tokenization is likely to occur at different times for different assets. Arrangements that link deliveries and payments across different types of platform will be necessary part of any transaction or transition and actually this was the conclusion is all i intended to read on that now that i'm reading through it made more sense because of what i wanted to connect back as we have connect the retail with my my theory with that connecting to xlm obviously because of by design xrp was designed to do the wholesale and now it makes sense why I wanted to share this because we were discussing the uh, smart contracts, which we know they have been using Ethereum. As we discussed in our CBDC video, um, that the CBDCs have been based on the Stellar XLM, the Ripple XRP, and the Ethereum. Although at some point they not only chose to use direct Ethereum, it was sometimes Quorum, which is based off of Ethereum same way that Stronghold is based off of Stellar and connects back to the Facebook Libra. But again, Libra is more of a peer-to-peer, -peer, which doesn't is actually a, a whole other thing from separate peer-to-peer -peer retail and wholesale. One thing I, I found more interesting when I saw this in here, now I remember why I wanted to highlight it as well, is the conclusion. The references, they reference Bank of England. We'll get to that. You have the DLT. Then in here we have the Project Jasper, our distributed wholesale payment systems feasible yet. We have Bank of Canada. Let's go down. Then we have Deloitte, and we have Deutsche Börse Group, and we have the ECB, the Bank of Japan. Then we have the uh, PISA, then we have the, um, um, I'm sorry, we have the, uh, what is it called? Um, I just passed it. Oh, and the Reserve Bank of New England, or New Zealand, I'm sorry. And as we've discussed, um, all of these connecting back again to them. Oh, here it is. This was the other part I wanted to share. Perfect. I got it by accident. We have the JPM coin, the Wells Fargo digital cash. We have the utility settlement coin. We have Projects Ubin and Jasper. Here we have the Project Jasper. We have Project Stella. We have Project Ubin. And again... If you watch our CBDC video after this, it will make much sense. 
done a few other videos, but I think that one's good enough to follow up with this one. And I'll try if I can to add it in the at the end of the video with one of the options if I if I'm able to. Um, let's actually go into Project Jasper just for a second. Let's see what it tells you. Collaboration between Payments Canada and the BOC. There you go. If you follow this channel, you know Payments Canada and you know BOC. Again, connect right back to the XLM XRP and Ethereum. It's successfully tested token versus token. TVT security settlement transfers where both tokens exist on the same ledger. The equity tokens represented a claim on equity held at Canada's depository system, and the cash tokens represented a claim on the BOC at par value. A process called Atomic Settlement, Box B, is a link. Feel free to click that if you choose to come back and follow up on it. A lot of articles in this, and they're all highlighted. You can click on to go further into them if you choose to. We've done that for you in previous videos, and again, if you want to follow up this video with the one we discussed, I'm not even labeled it a uh, deep dive into D CBDCs or something, but it would be a good follow-up with this one. Uh, further, once transferred, cash and security tokens were exchanged for their underlying assets in the sense the project concludes that it achieved gross DVP settlement with central bank money, DVP1. Given the higher liquidity requirements for DVP1 and POC, also tested whether credit could extend on the DLT to CDS members, it concludes that the single ledger approach resulted in greater technical efficiencies than provided by Canada's central or current security settlement system. Getting ahead of my thoughts. Another thing I will follow up, because we do such basic headlines and such deep dive information on the majority of our videos and share news on the others around those, I have been requested and I again I do hear your comments and try my best to uh, take them into advice to help provide better information because we put out so many good videos and it wasn't realized according to the headline we I'm saying that as I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten tabs open at the top but after this I promise you I will try my best to keep them small uh, we were requested to do more like in the three to five range and keep the headlines focused on what they are because a lot of people are missing such great content as we uh, recently the past week we saw Kevin Cage and a few other people stating on how some of their greatest videos had the smallest views and some of their quickest release videos had the largest and didn't have quite the same content inside so kind of the same thing here where we have released so much because we've chosen to keep our headlines simple, just directly relating to the content. We realize that now from getting your comments and we appreciate those very much. Thank you. We do appreciate the fact that it has drawn it to our attention that we are <clears throat> simplifying it, oversimplifying them to create more of a um, explosive, explosive information inside the video that the new people are skipping them because they don't realize that on this channel we're only going to discuss anything that explains why the price of XRP has to be high. Going back into the article, the Wholesale Digital Tokens Report describes the potential innovations and design questions associated with digital tokens that could be used to settle wholesale or large value payments made possible by new technologies such as blockchain or DLT. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you know, the only two this traditionally can fit would be XLM and XRP. But as we've known and we've shared, they're going down different lanes. They are not competition. Zero competition. Even if they could be, they've chosen different lanes, as we've shared many times over. The wholesale enterprise and institutional, again, is the perfect design for XRP. And as David Schwartz has said many times, the value has to be high on XRP to make sense. I'm going to read this again and think as I read this every word, as every executive at Ripple has stated, is the design for XRP. The Wholesale Digital Tokens Report describes the potential innovations and design questions associated with digital tokens that could be used to settle wholesale or large value payments made possible by new technologies 
such as blockchain or distributed ledger technology, DLT. Next article here, we have the wholesale settlement highlighting Although the term wholesale can be used to describe a variety of characteristics, it typically includes large value transactions settled between financial institutions, usually banks. And again, guys, we say this over and over and over and over. And even at times, you know, we've, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a kind word to put it there. Um, got a lot of disagreement information but we've shared and the reason we've stood our ground and stood firm on that is because we understand and a lot of people <clears throat> weren't even aware that there were two levels to finance or even with the central banks etc so again as we've shared on our Twitter probably more so than our YouTube if you are not a um, a person on Twitter feel free to if you're not going to get involved in the wildness of Twitter you can always check our page without actually having to be um, having to sign up the description below always has our Twitter uh, link direct at assets daily and you can check out the information there as well as we have continued to share over and over and over and over again to try and explain to um, XRP investors in the community to understand that XRP has to have a high price as people continue to say XRP will never go above 30 cents it'll never go above 50 cents it won't hit a dollar there's no way it's going to hit all-time high of three dollars and 84 cents it's not possible to hit a hundred a thousand is a dream ten thousand is out of the question let me ask you this if you believe in XRP and you don't believe its price is designed to be high, why would you have it? If you trust in Ripple and you trust in XRP, but you don't trust the people who designed it and made it, why do you have it? If you trust David Schwartz built something amazing that is going to change the world, and it already is, why don't you trust what he states? The example over and over again is the only one that I need for my decision and belief and trust in David Schwartz is when he said XRP is designed to have a million drops. At $10,000, the first drop is one cent. At a million dollars, the first drop is a dollar. That's pretty massive. And if I go with the low version, I trust him and I trust knowing the technology that XRP is designed to be a $10,000 per token. And again, as we read one more time, wholesale can be used to describe a variety of tech characteristics. It typically includes large value transactions settled between financial institutions, usually banks. Again and again and again, as we say on this channel, XRP has to have a high value, just like David Schwartz says, and just like he states day after day. Because to settle those wholesale, enterprise, institutional transactions, those are high value transactions. They're very large. So to settle those, does it make sense to send a million XRP to settle a million dollar transaction? Or as David Schwartz says, making XRP $1 million and sending one XRP to settle that transaction. If you do not realize and understand the size of remittance, for example, we've just did a video the other day and I believe let's, let's go to Swift as we've shared the CEO of chain is currently the, which was acquired by Stellar. He's currently the CEO of Interstellar also acquired by Stellar point is he states how they are not competition and how they're focused on a different market on the wholesale market now as we see here the wholesale over and over again I follow the theme every one of these are different articles we follow the theme stating wholesale 
has to have a high value. It has to have a large value over and over again. <clears throat> and that is the focus <clears throat> Ripple has had of XRP. Now imagine, Swift did, I believe it said in 2019, $77 trillion. As the CEO of Interstellar says, Ripple has designed XRP to be the digital Swift replacement. Now imagine, Swift did $77 trillion in 2019. Here we are in 2020, expected to be much larger for this year. Have you seen, as we've shared before, the size of remittance, which is massive, $77 trillion compared to that of derivatives, which we know Ripple and XRP are already beginning to make their stamp and their move into. For the last thought here, it has to have a large value to move a large value transaction. So if you're an XRP holder, just be patient. Remember the FUD gets loudest and the storm gets more windy just before the calm all right guys remember this is not financial advice it is for entertainment purposes only i want to leave you with a final thought you cannot fail at being yourself too many times people compare themselves to someone else or someone that they hold on a pedestal, whether it's a celebrity or some fancy millionaire, billionaire, whoever. But again, you're failing yourself by comparing yourself to someone else. If you hear my voice, you are perfectly designed and unique. There is no one else like you on the planet. That in itself should put a smile on your face. You are amazing and you are wonderful. Believe in yourself because you cannot fail at being you. Much love to you guys and we'll catch you in the next one.